We'll now deal with Newton's laws and circular motion problems. Students often have trouble with circular motion problems, not because the problems are intrinsically difficult, but because they try to treat them like they're special, and they put extra forces and do other things that they don't do on other types of problems. The key thing to remember about circular motion problems is that they're not, um, it's in a T right here, not different than any other Newton T problem. You draw a free body diagram, just like any other problem. You inventory the forces, just like you do any other problem. You don't do anything special at all. The only thing that you have that you know in this problem that you don't in others is that you know a formula for the acceleration toward the center of the circle. That's it, nothing else. So in order to make these problems easier from a mathematical standpoint, there is one thing that you should know, and that is that there's a trick that will make your algebra easier. And that's the coordinate axis trick. When you have a circle, always place one of the axis along the radius of the circle. You don't have to do this, but it greatly simplifies the mathematics. The acceleration in this direction, that is along the radius of the circle, is then the centripetal acceleration. And you have a formula for that. That's the main trick to working these problems. Now, Sometimes you will have a case where you have a problem that involves an inclined plane and maybe involves a circle, maybe it's a banked racetrack, what have you. My experience is that when you have a conflict about should you place the axis along the incline or should we place the axis along the radius of the circle, circles always trump. That is, usually the difficulties of dealing with the mathematics and the trig functions of the circle are more difficult than they are of the inclined plane or whatever else. So when you have that type of conflict, my experience tells me that usually you're best to make the axis along the radius. In other words, handle the circle, deal with the other one, and the algebra won't be as bad for the inclined plane, for instance. So in general, I tell you that that's my experience, there isn't a right or wrong, and you will have to probably figure out in your problem whether that makes sense for you or not. But generally circles are more difficult than other problems in terms of their algebra if you don't put the axis along the radius. Now I always put my x-axis along the radius, but you could put either axis that you choose. Other things, centripetal force. Now this one is where students usually go awry. They know that there's centripetal acceleration and they've paid attention and they know there's this net external force that causes acceleration and they've heard that there's this centripetal force so they decide that they've got to add some extra arrows to the free body diagram. That's the one thing you must not do. If you do that you're going to have trouble. When you add an arrow to a free body diagram you add a variable to the algebra equation. And if you add arrows that don't exist, then you add variables that are more unknowns to your equations than you will have equations, and you will be stuck. The centripetal force is an, any force, centripetal force, is any force or combination of forces that cause centripetal acceleration. So in other words, it's the sum of the forces along the radius. It is not a new force. So if you lay your axis along the x, then the sum of the forces in x is the centripetal force. If you lay your y-axis along the radius, the sum of the forces in y is the centripetal force. It's not a new force. It's got to be one of the or more parts of W, A, N, 
T and F. In some problems, the friction force may be the centripetal force. In another problem, it might be the tension on a rope pulling a ball around a circle. In the case of the moon going around the earth, it's gravity, it's weight, that's the centripetal force. My way of saying that is there's no such thing as C in want F. These are them. That's the only ones you can have on the free body diagram. Don't you go adding any extra C force. It doesn't exist. If you don't do that, if you stick to what you've done before on the free body diagram, so you'll be in good shape. The only thing that you'll do is after you get Newton's second law and you've written it down, you will look at the diagram and you'll decide, hey, maybe you've got this object and it goes around in a circle like this. And so you draw the free body diagram. There it is. Maybe there was a rope or something like this. Well, you'll draw that T on your free body diagram. X, Y. When you solve the sum of the forces in X is MAX, you'd have minus T. Over here, you're going to put in your centripetal acceleration, which is toward the center of the circle. The magnitude is V squared over R. But because the centripetal acceleration is toward the center of the circle, and that, according to this diagram, is in the minus x direction, there's a minus that goes in there. And then you go and you solve this equation. Don't do anything special. Take whatever the diagram is, draw the free body diagram, inventory the forces, put one axis along the radius. Along that radius, you know the acceleration, centripetal acceleration. Put in the plus or minus signs, depending on whether the center of the circle is pointing the negative or positive direction along that axis, and solve. There isn't anything special about circle problems. Okay, that's it for this. I've got a series of uh, different uh, example problems that I've worked out, so you'll want to watch the videos on those.